Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and my 147 day old red wiggler bin, which is the one that you see right here in front of us, it's been a week since we last checked in on it. It was then that we made sort of the formal decision that we're not going to be adding any food at that point. It was the previous feeding that came prior to that, eight days prior to that, which was 14, no, 15 days ago at this point. It was decided that that last feeding 15 days ago, which was the bin's 16th feeding, would be the last. And since then, the bin has been in a phase that I call foraging. And it's just nothing more than withholding fresh feedings, letting the worms focus on breaking down the residual leftover scraps of bedding and food in the bin. And then at some point, hopefully end up with a nice batch of really fine finished castings with minimal residual leftover scraps of stuff in it. It's not the only bin that I've got that's doing that right now. I've got another one over here that's been doing it for 40 days and another one over here that's only just started into it, I think maybe five days ago. But this one after 15 days of foraging is probably still got a little bit of work to do to break the lingering bits of material in the bin down. But I did promise myself that I would check in on my foraging bins even though there's a good amount of time that's required for it to complete just to make sure that everything's just humming along properly without any sort of weird stuff going on. So I'm checking in on this, not to feed, just to make sure everything's okay. So I'm gonna put our glove on, get this thing up on the bench, and we'll see how things look. Now during our last check-in of this bin a week ago, I sort of made a claim that I didn't really expect to see. Oh geez, I always find these little I think they're moth larvae in my bins. It's because this population of worms did actually live outside once upon a time, and while they did, I think a bunch of these little guys ended up in there. So they kind of make their way to the surface. When I see them, I pull them out. And man, do those castings look good. <laughs> All right, I don't want to get too distracted. Let me get rid of these little guys and we'll pick up where we left off. It also looks like there's a couple other unwanted creatures over here, little flying insects of some sort. I don't really see them in most of my bins. Here and there, I once in a while see them occupy a bin of mine. All right, so I could see those little worms hanging out on this piece of plastic all over that, all over those castings that are stuck to it. So I don't want to have to pick them all off or even disturb them for that matter. Hopefully folding it in half that way is enough to keep things nice and damp for them just for a little while until we're done checking in here. So I gotta say, the um, the plastic's definitely doing its intended job of keeping the moisture in here, keeping things nice and damp. And since the plastic was shoved out to the edges, it does seem like it's um, actually covering everything almost completely. Because even the very, very edges of the bin all the way around, I could feel dampness in the material all the way around. And I can even see it, it all just has the same kind of dark, damp appearance. That's pretty much exactly what I was going for. And I can also tell a lot of freshly deposited castings all over the surface here too, over the past week. I can see a cocoon over here. Sometimes it's just a matter of sort of slowing down so you can see things. This little round thing is not a cocoon. <laughs> it's a, uh, a roly-poly, it's a little nickname for the isopods or the pill bugs, or one of, the, one of the many names that they've got for those little guys. See, there's another one over here who's not as bashful. He hasn't rolled himself into a little ball yet. There's another one over here. I kind of intentionally put a bunch of those little guys in with these worms. So I did like the idea of, you know, as long as I was gonna be bringing creatures in from outside, let me at least make sure I get a couple of these roly polies into my worm bins, because I do wanna have them in my worm bins flying insects and moths and stuff like that maybe not so much <laughs> all right so i do remember i did review the video from last time i do remember us finding a pretty good piece of paper pretty good sized piece of paper that we sort of shredded into little tiny bits and we threw all that stuff down under the surface here in the hopes that it being submerged within the castings within the bed that it would get a little bit more attention and I wouldn't expect uh, you know, a bunch of paper this size to be gone in a week's time. So I could see uh, I could see this, this material requiring a little bit more time to continue breaking down. The other thing that we've been doing in this bin 
during the past few check-ins is every time we bump into one of these little thin slices of avocado pit that I've got in my bins, we just sort of help it crumble apart because it pretty much does so almost on its own. But I think that if it's a bunch of little itsy bitsy shreds, as opposed to just one clump or lump piece of material, it's probably got a greater chance of breaking down. I think that's been my main focus in this bin lately is just to sort of help things break down, kind of break them apart, break them down into smaller component pieces so that they're much more approachable by that many more worms so it can all just break down. So this paper is going to go to, I'm sure of it, just going to require a little bit more time. Besides those avocado pits that we've been breaking up and besides these chunks of paper that we submerged, there was also a couple banana stems I remember. And they were placed in right alongside the the paper, I believe. And this this is definitely um, the stem of a banana. There's just something about it that makes it um distinct. I think maybe just like the the cut end of it that sort of stays together, and then all the strands go flying. Um, but I mean, geez, that did not look anything like that last time. And then naturally the cork. <laughs> sometimes we bump into the cork. Sometimes we don't. I don't go out of my way to try to find it, but that's just one of those sort of novelty items that we probably should not expect to see break down anytime soon. So I do, I do believe that having everything submerged down below the surface, it's probably helping all this stuff break down because there is even a higher degree of moisture down within the material than I noticed right out on the top surface. Not too surprising. And I think that's kind of the reason this bin just seems to be humming along so nicely because the material all throughout it is just so nice and damp. I believe this was also a chunk of seed. A little bit different color, but it broke apart just as readily. Uh, this is another banana stem. All these leftovers that appear to be in much um, better shape a week ago seem like they're really starting to dwindle down to virtually nothing. And, you know, the other thing that really... Um, is a pretty big relief too is that I just look around and I do see them so here's here's a pretty good example of a big one <laughs> these um these leaf stems are usually what I use as sort of a gauge to tell me if the foraging has completed or is coming close to being complete when you really start seeing fewer and fewer of these things and I do believe that we are definitely seeing fewer of them today than just a week ago so even this stuff's breaking down quite nicely and you know, since I'm not putting in fresh supplies of lettuce and cabbage and carrots and all kinds of other yummy stuff, they're just gonna have to make do with whatever's in here, you know? So all these chunks of seed that have been getting no attention as I break them up, they're just gonna hopefully be able to break down that much more quickly. Even those um, banana stems, I believe I did sort of pry my thumb into one of them last week to try to help sort of split it open and break it into little pieces. So I really like the way things are coming along in here. I didn't really expect to see a focus of worms in any one particular spot within the bin, but then I did remember that I did end up putting the banana stems, all these pieces of paper. Everything did sort of end up down the middle. So maybe those little items that we just sort of bumped into could have had some con contribution to drawing a greater number of worms down the middle. So I don't know if we were to inspect the edges now, if we'd expect to see quite as many worms but with the dampness being spread out pretty much everywhere really nicely my guess would be that maybe even out here on the edges where sometimes we don't see too many worms we might see a good population cruising around out there and I, I see that's exactly what we're getting out here it does feel a little bit drier just a little bit but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. And you can tell the worms appear to like, to like it too because they're just in here in good numbers. So that means even little scraps that are all the way out here on the edge are also getting the attention they need to break down. So that's a relief to see as well. I guess it's just a little bit of a bummer sometimes when you find a, a portion of your bin that's running maybe a little bit dry near the edge or something near the top surface. I don't know, wherever the case may be. And you know that that material is getting virtually no attention. It's just sitting there. Instead of, you know, composting, getting broken down, it's kind of just idle, you know? 
And if there's anything you could do about getting it more damp so that it gets more traffic, then it definitely seems like it's worth the effort. But in this case, I don't think anything needs to be done, nothing whatsoever, because the material has just this perfect moisture content all the way around. You know, over on this side, it seemed just for a moment like it might have been a little bit drier. But as I made my way over to this edge, I could tell right away that it was quite damp again. So I think this bin might not be foraging for a whole lot longer. <laughs> I mean, even though that other bin that I showed you earlier has been um, going for 40 days now in its foraging, it just might not have had quite the optimal conditions as this one, you know? It just may not have been kept quite as damp. There may not have been as um, thorough worm traffic running throughout the bin because of that. I mean, who knows? This bin might even have a greater number of worms in it, which is possible too. These are red wigglers. Red wigglers do increase their numbers quite rapidly, quite readily. So I don't even remember what my estimate of how many worms occupy this bin is anymore, but it's probably outdated and probably not even truly representative of how many worms occupy this bin. So this is kind of a fun bin to check in on, but I don't think we're gonna see anything much more exciting than what we've seen as far as like, you know, big concentrations of worms in any one place. I mean, after 15 days, it's unlikely that we're going to find any large scraps of food that would draw that kind of attention or create that kind of a reaction, kind of that mobbing of the worms around something yummy. But you never know. I, mean, could, I could very well have missed a, a large chunk of something really tasty last time I was picking through here, and maybe that's where we're going to end up finding a bunch of worms hanging out. You might be noticing me stopping every time I, I comb across the material and find one of these um, chunks of avocado pit. I can't resist trying to bust it up to help it break down. And they do break up quite readily, so I'm not taking too much time by doing that. But it definitely seems to make good sense to do so. That's a banana stem that's actually holding up quite nicely, right? So. We'll do what we did last week, too, when we found one of these. We'll just sort of try to break it apart a little bit, increase its surface area, give a far greater number of worms access to the stuff that makes it up um, by increasing its surface area. So I don't think we're going to see too much of those banana stems going forward another week or so, and those are going to be toast. And I think the whole bin is actually going to be pretty far along in another week or so, even the stems of the leaves. Even those look like they could quite possibly in another week's time or so be close to gone. It's just these larger sticks that I wouldn't really expect to see gone in that much time. Those things will just sort of have to get picked out at the end or sort of be rounded up at one point and we could maybe use that sort of stuff, any sort of large chunk materials that didn't break down use that as the foundation for eventually set, setting up a baiting area within the bin to try to round all the worms up into one particular spot so that we can collect them up and get them moved out of this container. But man, this material is really so nice from the moisture level to the concentration of worms throughout it. And even with all these scraps of stuff that still needs time to break down, it just feels like it's not far from being there really coming along quite nicely so it does feel weird when you finally get to the end of checking a bin like this out after maybe 10 or who knows how many minutes <laughs> I've been pouring through here to determine that absolutely nothing is needed and that if we would never even looked in on here it would have just continued going nicely on its own without our help although yeah you got to admit all those pieces of seed that I um, picked out of the material and broke into smaller chunks, um, that stuff will definitely benefit from us having broken them up into smaller pieces today. And probably the same thing for those banana stems too, even though they probably would have broken down pretty easily on their own without too much help, I think, you know, breaking them up the way we did will also help them break down more quickly as well, pretty much everything. So yeah, I think this bin is probably not 
got much more time left before we can switch it over from foraging to the next phase. Some people might actually just, you know, to decide that they're going to separate the worms from the castings using, using really bright lights and get the whole thing done within a couple hours and, and, and then life goes on. But I, I usually take a more methodical, slow approach of just letting the worms move out of the material on their own. No bright lights, no nothing. I just, uh, I just re, I just re uh, start the feedings in one particular part of the bin, and um, and they come a running. Because <laughs> after another couple of weeks, there's really going to be not much as far as food goes in this bin anymore. They keep plowing through this material the way they've been here. Uh, I would think that in another week's time, it's going to be tough to find food in here. So it should be. Should be nice to see how this thing looks in another week's time, and at that point we might initiate the migration out of the material for the worms. And at that point we'll just set up a feeding area on one edge of the bin, and, and they'll pretty much come running for that. So that was fun, I got to admit. Oh, found another one of our little friends. I'll have to get rid of him once we're done here. But I don't want to take up any more of your time with mundane stuff like that. Besides that, I got some other things that need to be cleaned up and put away. But uh, before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.